each Friday of let many Catholics around the world pray the Stations of the Cross. For EWTN founder's mother Angelica, it was a daily devotion. EWTN chaplain Father Joseph Mary Wolf collected the spiritual wisdom she shared with him into a book titled Mother Angelica's Way of the Cross. The booklet, which is available at the EWTN religious catalog, features pictures of the actual stations Rita Rizzo prayed in front of in her name of Ohio before entering the monastery. And Father Joseph Mary joins us now from Alabama. Father, wonderful to see you. Um, first off, if you don't mind, talk to us about what inspired you to put this book together. Yes, so you may know Mother Angelica had a major cerebral hemorrhage Christmas Eve 2001. And so she really went through a, a difficult time, but she had a wonderful group of retired nurses and active nurses and doctors who cared for her over the course of those years, especially at the end, she was bedridden for eight years. And they just loved to be there. They loved to be in her room. And Mother Angelica eventually did, of course, pass away in 2016 on Easter Sunday. And they said, Father Joseph, we want to visit the places where Mother Angelica grew up and the monastery in Canton, Ohio. Would you go with us? So I agreed to go with them, and we visited these places. We actually stayed at the monastery where Mother came from in Canton, Ohio, Santa, Santa Clara Monastery. And we visited her birthplace and Rhoda Weiss's uh, home that had such an impact on her. And then we visited St. Anthony's Church. And St. Anthony's Church is where Rita Rizzo, when she was a teenager, prayed the Stations of the Cross. And I said, you know, this would be wonderful if we could take these actual stations that she prayed before and make them available to people. So that's what we did. Oh, that is wonderful. Uh, you know, I want to know, uh, why, why did the Stations of the Cross mean so much to Mother Angelica? You know, I was talking with a, a woman that knew Mother and she had a brain tumor that had to have surgery on and it left her somewhat debilitated and she said you know I think the most important mother uh, lesson that mother left me she said is how to suffer how to suffer well and that mother herself of course had a variety of sufferings with her family breakup with her physical problems and her mother's uh, depressions and those sort of poverty that they grew up in and that's why mother could relate to people because she understood their sufferings and Mother said to me one time that suffering was her companion that kept her dependent on God. And so when we go to the Stations of the Cross, we're reflecting on our Lord's sufferings, but also His love, and something of His strength and His love is imparted to us. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, I'm wondering also, do you have any advice for the faithful on how maybe they can incorporate the Stations of the Cross into their prayer lives, not just for Lent, but year-round? Yes, you know, I had visited Mother Angelica, and this is related in this book. When I was a young friar, I was troubled, and Mother could see that I was troubled, and we were talking. And she had on her desk a little plaque with all 14 Stations of the Cross. And she said, you need, need to make the Stations of the Cross every day. Because she knew that I would find strength in that. Life has troubles. Life has sufferings. It has difficulties. And so when we see that our Lord has gone there first, like I said, something of his love, his strength is imparted to us when we reflect on these different stopping points on his own way of the cross. That's great, great to hear. Um, another thing I want to talk about is, you know, I know that you visited Mother Angelica on her last Good Friday back in 2016, and you were with her, mm -hmm. um, you know, when she died a couple of days later on Easter Sunday. If you don't mind, could you maybe share um, some memories of that time with her during her last days? You know, the caregivers really reminded me of this, so they had an insight about this. Mother's passion, if you will, began on Christmas Eve when she had that major cerebral hemorrhage. She wasn't expected to survive it, but she did. And it was a time of suffering. She could no longer speak as clearly and easily as she had before. And she went through all of that time, all of those years, 
And I was speaking with uh, one of her caregivers recently, and she said she remembered Good Friday very well because Mother was really suffering on Good Friday, and all the caregivers, most of them were there helping Mother, and they were praying with her. And they prayed the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 o'clock, and at 3 o'clock, Mother seemed to be more at peace. Well, I went to the room that day, and there's a crucifix that was in her room, and so I took that crucifix, as I had done many other times on Good Friday, and held it up to Mother, and she kissed it for the last time. And so there was that memory that she, she always wanted to kiss, not the feet on the corpus, but the open heart. You know, that she had this great love for Jesus, and that's the very cross, actually, that was in her room, that she kissed that last Good Friday. And then we were all with her on Easter Sunday, praying with her, the sisters and the friars, the caregivers. And so she gently passed into eternal life on Easter Sunday. Well, Father, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. We really appreciate it, and thank you for all that you do. God bless you. God bless you.